We're so excited about our next guest. He's an author and a motivator. His new book is Identity Leadership. To lead others, you must first lead yourself. Welcome back, best-selling author, Stedman Graham. Yeah. Hi, Stedman. So good to have you back. Good to have you back, Stedman. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah, the last time you were here, I think we were shooting hoops. Yeah, I remember. You're a pretty good ball player. <laughs> Not as good as you, though, right? <laughs> oh, I didn't say that, but... You know. <laughs> Are you still, do you still play basketball? You still get out there? Uh, you know, I, I'll play horse every once in a while. You mm. know, I'm not running or anything up and down the court, but uh, that's good enough. I'm, I'm a big golfer, so I love to golf. Yeah, How, how's yeah. Oprah in the sports world? Uh, she is really good, you know. She walks golf? and runs, and she does uh, the life cycle, and so she's, she's doing well. Yeah. She's got the Weight Watchers thing going on. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, she's doing okay. She's doing okay. A couple more years, <laughs> she might make it. Yeah, she's doing, and, and the beautiful thing about anything is that you can, create a lifestyle around your life so to be able to organize your life create your purpose find a vision for yourself be able to organize the world around you how do you do that though how do you create oh, a lifestyle around man, your look life here. yeah look here we have it all here <laughs> this is book number so, 12 that's the 12, no, 12 book. so you know this is self-leadership self uh, based on the philosophy that you cannot lead anyone else until you first lead yourself that's the problem the problem is we cannot lead ourselves because we're stuck in a system of work. Nothing wrong with work, but we're doing the same thing over and over every day, which is nothing. And then we forget to think and turn the brain on. We're not engaged. 64% of the people in the workforce are not engaged. Now we have the technology which takes our focus away from ourselves. We yeah. become followers. Uh, and we pretty much become slaves to the outside world. Okay. And the educational system is traditional, which is fine, but it teaches us how to memorize and take tests, repeat the information back, get labeled with a grade two weeks later, we forget the information. So you can't learn anything. Mm -hmm. So, which is why we're having a lot of problems in Chicago with our young people, is because they're not learning anything and they don't know who they are, they have no identity, mm -hmm. and they can't improve their life because the way that they learn is they just memorize and they give everything away. So, 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 so pretty much you can't control your own destiny. In the 21st century, that used to be fine 10 years ago or 20 years ago when the institutions would take care of you, you have social security, you have a pension. Right. right. It would, it would, the community knew each other, all of that. Today, you're a loner. Right, right. You're by yourself. How old were you when you found your purpose and you figured out who Stedman Graham is and how to lead yourself? It was 31 before I realized it wasn't about race. Oh, really? Because I had a race-based consciousness and I thought it was, I was defined by my color, my skin, and I was programmed to believe that I was less than because of that. And I started traveling around the world and uh, with this guy named Bob Brown, and we're going all the ro around the world, and I saw, saw all these people of color making things happen, I realized, oh, you've been hoodwinked. You've been programmed to believe that it's about the color of your skin. The color's not gonna change. What does change is your purpose. What does change is your thinking. What does change is your acumen. What does change is your ability to self-empower yourself if you have the secret to understanding how to do that, which is why we only have 1% of the world understanding how to organize themselves, build their own life. Oprah is a great example of focusing on a purpose. She's one of the greatest communicators in the world, right. organizing you know, her brand around what she does, building on that every single day, using education as a way to learn so you become a cognitive learner because whatever you read, you can write it down, you can organize it, and you can apply it to your purpose, which allows you to self-actualize your potential. Now, there's eight other steps after that, but go ahead. Yeah, no, you <laughs> said you, you discovered this when you were 31. How can I young people- that I started the process of understanding that it wasn't about race, and I, and I, well, I was focusing on the journey of my life, right. and, and so that was just one part. Sure, how do young, how do young people grasp that? You have to be taught that. So I have to create a customized system for your son or your daughter to teach them how to empower themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's my gonna, wheelhouse. I need help. Yeah, help it, me, help not, me, Stephen. It's not going to happen the way the system is set up because it's not designed for your empowerment. It right. teaches you to be a good worker. Right. And te okay. It teaches you to make other people rich. It teaches you to give everything away. <laughs> right. So, so you're you saying it's on the parents yourself. then to teach you, your children. It makes you a weak person. Mm -hmm. So when you become a weak person and you're not focused on talent, skills, abilities, passions, and purpose, and most importantly, love, that's the foundation of transforming your energy mm -hmm. 
from negative to positive. So if I want to destroy you, all I have to do is create a negative environment, negative schools, negative opportunities, and structure a, your whole life around negativity, which you learn that, and then you focus on destroying yourself because that's the way that you think. You right. don't think you're good enough. So you say achieving your purpose is all about your attitude, how you view things. It's, it's how you feel about yourself, number one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you love yourself? Mm -hmm. Do you care for yourself? Do you work on yourself? Or can you build and shape and design a, a program for yourself? What do you do for yourself? So you can't, if you can't do it for yourself, you can't do it for anybody else. Right. Now you, you've done an amazing job keeping your own identity and being successful in your own right as you were married to one of the most powerful women in the Not world. Not married. Not married. Together. <laughs> partner. One of the most partner. Yes. Partner's good. <laughs> love, and partner. Love. Yeah, How good. have you been able to maintain your identity? Wow. <laughs> That's the secret sauce. Uh, and I had to learn how to do it before I could actually teach someone else to do it. As I programs in the schools, you know, I train corporate folks all over the world about how to define themselves, how to empower themselves based on my pain and my opportunity. And also I had to go to the pit to find it. What's the pit? Which, the, the pit is that you got to go all the way to the bottom to figure out who you are. Of your own soul. Of your own soul. Mm. That's grandmother, that's mom, that's dad. What happened to you in that household for 18 years? What did you listen to? Okay. What's your energy like? All of that. So when you go to the pit, it's an internal issue. It's not an external issue. External is define you by your house, your car, your money, your gender. You can't make it be your woman. You can't make it because it's a man's world. Defined by your race. You can't make it because of the color of your skin. Defined by your uh, entitlements. Defined by all those things that are programmed are designed and programmed to make you weak. And so I can control your mentality. Mm. It's about the way that you think. So for me, man, it took me a long time. First it was race. Then I had two, two special needs brothers in my family I had to deal with. I would never tell anybody that. Mm -hmm. It's an internal issue. And then I had um, uh, uh, defined, every time I walk out the door, I'm defined by you know, my relationship with Oprah. People don't even know my name. How does that make so, you feel, or how well, did it make you feel? How does it make you feel? It makes you feel like, well, um, what I learned from that is that I had to change it around and say, you know what? Oh, I get it. It's not how the world defines you. The only thing that matters is how you define yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but do you have the tools to define yourself? No, you don't because the system doesn't give you the tools. If you happen to have a mother or father who says, you know what, son, uh, I want you, or daughter, I want you to be able to understand how to take information, education, resources, make it relevant to your purpose in life, transfer it to your mind, because you've got to be a thinking human being, which is why they teach cognitive thinking. Read a paragraph, know what the paragraph said, apply the paragraph to your life, okay? Apply the information to your life. And then transfer it to the American Free Enterprise System and the global market. Now through technology, you can organize the world and all the information around it and make that applicable to the core of who you are, to your soul. So other, other, the other way of living, which is the slave living, is simply giving everything away to everybody else. And in 40 years, you have no more in the end than you had in the beginning. Because all you do is work, 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 and there's no thinking, no developing, no learning, no book reading, no application, no relevancy, and so you're not engaged in the world that you live in, especially now, because you're not aware of what your possibilities are. So until I make you aware of your possibilities through a process, which is a, another system that you have to co-create with the system already in place, educational system, you need a supplemental educational system designed to co-create with the system in place so that you can empower both of those systems, which is the one that you want to really empower is you. How long are we talking here for this system to get developed? I got it right here. But I, I got you right here. I want you to tell me and our audience. We're going to get the book, but we want you to tell. How long did it take you? It, it takes you a lifetime. So you're still developing you your got, system. Yeah, but you got to have a process to follow. Okay. See, if you don't have a purpose, you can't organize information. You just continually, oh, you're all over the place. You're over here, you're over here, you're over here, you're over here. There's no focus. So whatever mm -hmm. you focus on, the span. So you got 60,000 thoughts a day 
how in the world are you going to focus? Mm -hmm. Where are you going? It's in the book? Yeah. <laughs> it's in the book. I I'm only reading the book so, if it's in Oprah's book club. Is well, this in Oprah's book club? it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> It doesn't make any difference because the process for her is the same process for you and the same process for me. So you can be her. You know, you can be as good as her or greater than her if you understand the process of success. And you start at three years old, right, like she did as a communicator. And then you become, you, you get the training, and then you start at 17 in radio. Mm -hmm. And then you go to uh, Baltimore, you start there. And you practice and practice. How did Michael Jordan become a good basketball player? One of the greatest? Mm -hmm. Practice. Right. What but but he practice? also, I mean, amazing you, gifts, too. No, not gifts. Develop talent. Mm -hmm. You have yeah, talent. Yeah, he didn't make his high school team, did he? Well, well he didn't make the varsity high, team. But I'm just saying, if you have the talent, yeah. And you can develop that, and you can practice that in the 24 hours that you have every day, which is the only thing that makes you equal. Everybody has 24 hours. The question is, why are you wasting your time? With all the resources we have here in Chicago, with all the resources we have around the world, with all the resources we have through technology, right? We got free schools, the greatest country in the world, and you're telling me you can't make it? You can't make it because the process doesn't, uh, you, the process that you have is a failed system. Mm -hmm. And until you turn that around and make everything relevant to your life every day, you're not going anywhere. You're going to be lost for the rest of your life. That's, that, we're talking 6.9 billion people. I, we could talk to Stedman all day. He should be a talk <laughs> show host. But we're out of time. Stedman, thank you so much. Come back and see us again. The book, Identity Leadership, is out now. And guess what? Stedman is giving a copy to everyone in our audience. <laughs>